So in my last Home Assistant video, I was kind of up to the point of getting ready to install. And well, so for my part, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with the um, the OS install, so effectively the, the Nook image. And um, it's a very straightforward process, but ultimately, you know, you've got to follow the instructions. Hey everyone and welcome to a new video on Bite of Geek. Today I am continuing my journey of getting Home Assistant installed up and running and uh, this part is all about getting it installed onto my Intel NUC. Uh, something which should have been an awful lot easier than what it turned out to be. Um, but you know what I've got here is a, um, a process you know that hopefully will help you guys and you know I'll take you through some of the issues that I encountered along the way some of the things that I ultimately changed in the BIOS as well to help with this and um, what actually ended up being a relatively straightforward process without further ado basically you know like most people you probably go off to the home assistant website and you'll go and uh, you know follow the instructions for the uh, generic install so this for you know, maybe if you've got a Nook or whether you're building your own PC or something like that. And, you know, it's, as I said in my last video, very straightforward instructions. Uh, you know, you basically download the image file and use something like Etcher to go and burn it to a USB stick and then boot up your system and away it goes. Now, when I uh, first did this, that was all fine. Uh, and unfortunately, Home Assistant ended up installing itself onto the USB stick. Uh, which I only realised when I went to go and remove the um, the USB stick at the end of the installation. So obviously that was a bit of a, uh, a non-runner there. Now, doing a lot of uh, digging around uh, various forums and obviously a lot of information on the Home Assistant website and the forums there, you know, it really is a, a gold mine of information if you, you're stuck on things. Um, it turns out, you know, a lot of people were having problems getting this installed with um, you know, NUCs which have got NVMe drives in. Lots of different solutions for this, proposed solutions, uh, you know, things like buying external enclosures for NVMe drives and taking your drive out of your NUC and putting it into that and then connecting it to your regular PC and basically doing the install via that PC. All well and good, you know, didn't really want to spend any more money on something for what is a relatively short-lived process and also didn't really want to wait uh, for that to get delivered as well um, so you know carried on doing a bit more digging around and one of the routes that is proposed is by using uh, Ubuntu uh, as, a, as, a, as a live image and uh, using that and um, getting it installed that way now uh, that's the route that I went down uh, next and uh, that all really kind of worked quite well. Following that, I did then fall into um, some more problems. Uh, basically, Home Assistant wouldn't complete its installation process, its, its whole boot up process. Uh, it was struggling and actually stalled at one point. So what I'm gonna show you now are some of the BIOS settings that I uh, changed. So obviously on the previous one, previous video, we talked about things like uh, secure boot and things like that. So a couple of things here, really. Um, so my NUC has a, a Wi-Fi adapter in it. So I disabled the Wi-Fi adapter and the Bluetooth adapter as well. There's, there's no real need for that for this part of the installation process. So that meant that I had to have my NUC connected up via a, a wired ethernet cable um, and the other thing whilst I was in there as well uh, which really you can do afterwards you don't need to do that as part of the install process was was just to turn on the option to have the NUC uh, automatically restart should I lose power to it I just thought it was worthwhile doing that whilst I was in there so um, yeah you know basically got those uh, settings changed and just went through the whole setup process again and this is obviously what I've got uh, documented for you now. First step is obviously get a freshly formatted USB stick, download Ubuntu latest version and go and uh, use Etcher uh, which you, you may need to download that as well 
and um, burn that image onto your USB stick. Now, you also need another USB stick which has got your uh, Home Assistant um, uh, generic image on it as well. So you just need to uh, extract that onto the USB. You don't need to burn that, you just need to extract that onto the USB. Um, what you need to be doing is you need to boot up onto that Ubuntu USB stick and uh, you know, use the uh, tryout version. Now, um, once that's booted up, um, you know, you'll get a nice uh, Ubuntu desktop environment. And there's a couple of things. This is where it gets a little bit more difficult than uh, it, it should be really. Uh, but if you follow these instructions, I think you'll be absolutely fine. So um, first thing is when you've got your desktop, you need to click on the uh, dots in the bottom left hand corner, the nine uh, dots there. And uh, you need to uh, basically um, run terminal. So you need to look for terminal in the list. You can type it in in the search bar and that will come up with a, um, a console window that you can type stuff in. So um, if you just type in uh, gnome-discs and uh, press enter on that, you then have a window appear on the screen which has got, uh, on the left hand side, it's got kind of like the list of your drives on your NUC and then the main part of the window is actually kind of like the partition information. Now, what you want to do is to select the main drive that you're going to install uh, onto and you want to remove the partition. You do that by clicking on the minus, uh, the button with the minus sign on it next to the, next to the cog. And um, once you've got rid of your partition, so you really don't want any partitions on there. If you're just going to use your NUC for Home Assistant, you might as well get rid of the partition. So once you've got rid of your partitions, then that minus will change to a plus and you can create a new partition on there. So you click on the plus, um, you get a little pop-up window appear again. You, know, you want to click on the erase uh, toggle switch so that that is enabled. Um, you want to specify other for partition information and then uh, on the, the final pop-up window say you know you don't want any partition information. So that will create you a new blank partition. It will, depending on the size of your drive in your machine, it will take a little while to go through. So once you've gone and formatted the drive, you then need to get Etcher installed into your live Ubuntu. So open up Firefox and go to the Etcher website. I'll put all the links down below in the description for this video um, if you don't know where to get these things from. Um, click on the, uh, the download. So you want to download the um, Linux uh, Ubuntu version on the, uh, on the website. And um, you'll get asked if you want to open that or whether you want to uh, save it. So you want to open it with the archive manager, which is the default option. So just, just go with the default there. Um, once it's downloaded and opened it, you will then get the option to extract the contents of that archive file. So uh, you have a little pop-up window. You just click on the extract button in the top corner, and then that will put that file uh, into your live install now. Just one thing you need to check on mine, it was all it was already set, so it was okay. But just right click on that app image file and uh, choose properties, and then go into permissions and just check that um, there's a little tick box there. Just check that the allow execute file as uh, a program is ticked. As I say, mine was already ticked, so then you just need to double click on the app image file and that will launch Etcher for you. Uh, so you click on the flash from file button and you're going to need to navigate to your USB uh, stick that has your Home Assistant image installed on it. Um, if you haven't got that stick installed on your NUC right, um, at this point in time, just plug that in and it'll, it'll get detected and show up on the screen. So you select that and then you select the image file that is, uh, is, is shown in the file list. Um, when you've done that, you then need to click on the, um, the change button in the, the middle option, so that's your target drive. Where you want this to be written to. Now, when I did this, my NVMe drive didn't get displayed uh, initially on the screen. I had to click on the show more or the show hidden option on the on the screen there and it was listed there. So I, I ticked that and I unticked the USB drive. The last thing really is click on the flash button. Now it will give you a bit of a warning saying you're going to write this to a system drive. You sure you want to do that? So you can just say yes and, and off you go. It'll It'll write that uh, home assistant image then onto your NVMe drive. Take a couple of minutes to go and do it. 
Now at the time of recording this, the version of Etcher that was available on the website, it does actually come up with an error at the very end, a little pop-up uh, message about being unable to read a, a file. Um, I tried this twice and it, it does it on both, or it did it on both occasions and you know, doing a bit of searching around about it. It seems, you know, it wasn't just me, you know, plenty of other people seem to have that problem as well. And, um, you know, it's something, it looks like they've introduced that into this version of the application. However, that being said, um, I found no issue with the install, um, with that, uh, that error. Uh, there was no real need to go back to previous version or anything like that. So, um, you know, shut down your Ubuntu uh, live uh, instance, you know, just click on the button in the top right hand corner and, and power down your NUC, uh, disconnect your USB sticks and, um, you know, power on your NUC. And what you'll find is, uh, you know, all the Home Assistant uh, operating system will all load up, go through all its, you know, start its services, configuration, all that kind of stuff. And you'll end up then with a command line interface um, with the, the IP addresses of your Home Assistant instance. And after that, you can then go and manage it then through your web browser on another computer. So that's where we leave this part of the journey in this video. I'm sorry to do that to you guys. You know, I don't want to be creating mammoth long videos for people to have to trawl through. I want these to be manageable sizes for everybody to follow. Um, you know, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments, you know, your experience, you know, if you've gone through this before, how's that looking, you know, what I've gone through, if you've experienced similar kind of problems, have I done something not quite right? Is there some better way of doing it? You know, let everybody know in the comments. Um, you know, if you've enjoyed the video, hit the like button. And, um, you know, if you've not subscribed to the channel and you want to follow the rest of this series, then certainly hit the subscribe button and click on the bell notification icon so you get that, um, that notification when the next video is available. Um, but as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.